Would you call the roll, please? Jason Blair. Here. Melissa Hunt. Here. Terry Kavner. Here. David Roberts. Here. Mark Ham. Here. Glenn Lewis. Here. Would you please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item 2 is the consent docket. Item A is receive and approve the minutes of the regular city council meeting held March 7th, 2016. Item B, accept sanitary sewer, water, and drainage improvements for the following additions. Avondale addition, located south of Northeast 27th Street and east of Eastern Avenue. Belmar North addition, section two, located south of 34th Street and west of Center Road. Sandera Lakes addition, section one, located south of 34th Street, excuse me, southwest 34th Street and west of Telephone Road. Uh, Siena uh, Ridge Edition, Section 2, located west of Bryan Avenue and north of Northeast 27th Street. Sonoma Lakes Edition, Section 1, located east of Bryan Avenue and north of Northeast 12th Street. Item C is accept the public water and sewer improvements for the 35 West apartments located north of Southwest 19th Street and west of Telephone Road. Uh, item D is reappoint Tom Baker, Tad Lewis, Walter uh, Weirun uh, for electrical board for a term of two years. Item E is appoint Danny Gwynn and Danny Thomas to the electrical board for a term of two years. Item F is reappoint Glenn Hollingsworth, Brian Moody, and Frank Randall to the mechanical board for a term of two years. Item G, reappoint Ken Davidson, uh, Dale Finner, Colby Hendricks and Brandon Morrison to the plumbing board for a term of two years. Item H is approve a budget supplement to fund 14 in the amount of $2,805,000 to reflect the bond proceeds received from the May 2016 Park Central Obligation Bond Issue. And item I is approve and ratify claims and expenditures for FY 2015-2016 in the amount of Seven million five hundred sixty-one thousand eighty-four dollars twenty-four cents. Move to approve. All right. Thank you. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Would you call for the vote, please? Jason Blair. Yes. Melissa Hunt. Yes. Terry Cabner. Yes. David Roberts. Yes. Mark Ham. Yes. Glenn Lewis. Yes. Item carries. Item number three is consider approval of a supplement in the amount of ten thousand five hundred sixty-nine dollars to the Engineering Services Agreement with EST Incorporated for I-35 Southwest 34th Street Bridge Project to conduct a detailed social and economic impact analysis as part of the environmental assessment process per ODOT requirement. Mayor, just as this uh, agenda item says, this is an amendment to the contract with EST for the design work on the bridge project. This was a, an additional requirement to the ODOT for some additional work. Um, on the environmental process for clearing the, br the bridge project from the environmental perspective. And it's work that we didn't expect to have to do in the beginning, but we're advised by ODOT that they were uh, going to requirement, require it as a result of discussions with FHWA, Federal Highway. Um, so with federal dollars involved with this, we have to comply with um, all of the federal requirements for projects such as this. We'll delay the project. No. Okay. Do we have a motion? Make a motion to approve. All right. Thank second. you. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? <coughs> Any other discussion? Would you call for the vote, please? Melissa Hunt. Yes. Terry Kavner. Yes. David Roberts. Yes. Mark Ham. Yes. Jason Blair. Yes. Glenn Lewis. Yes. Item carries. At this time, we will recess the city council meeting and convene the more public works authority meeting. Item number four is the consent docket. Item A, receive and approve the minutes of the regular Moore Public Works Authority meeting held March 7, 2016. Item B, approve and ratify claims and expenditures for FY 2015-2016 in the amount of $340,898.91. Move to approve. Right. Second. Thank you. Thank you both. We have a motion and a second. Would you call for the vote, please? 
Barry Kavner. Yes. David Roberts. Yes. Mark Hamm. Yes. Jason Blair. Yes. Melissa Hunt. Yes. Glenn Lewis. Yes. I don't care. This time we will recess the more public works authority meeting and convene the more risk management meeting. Item number five is the consent docket. Item A is receive and approve the minutes of the regular more risk management meeting held March 7, 2016. Item B is approve and ratify claims and expenditures for FY 2015-2016 in the amount of $221,477.45. Thank you. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Would you call for the vote, please? David Roberts? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Terry Kavner? Yes. Glenn Lewis? Yes. Item carries. At this time, we'll recess the more risk management meeting and convene the more economic development authority meeting. Terry, I believe it's you. Item six is the roll call. Call the roll, please. Jason Blair? Here. Melissa Hunt? Here. Glenn Lewis? Here. David Roberts. Here. Mark Ham. Here. Terry Kavner. Here. Item seven is the consent docket. Item A is to receive and approve the minutes of the regular more economic development authority meeting held February 17th, 2016. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Thank you both. Uh, would you call for vote, please? Jason Blair. Yes. Melissa Hunt. Yes. Glenn Lewis. Yes. David Roberts. Yes. Mark Ham. Yes. Terry Kavner. Yes. Uh, passes. At this time, we'll recess the more economic development authority meeting and reconvene, reconvene the city council meeting. All right. Thank you. Item number eight is new business. We can reflect on the minutes that all the members that were present before are still here. Item eight is citizens form for items not on the agenda. We have one citizen signed up. Mr. Brown.
off into the 30s. Uh, but the quality was very good. You know, two-thirds of the kids qualified for the state swim meet, so that, that's a good thing. Uh, I guess what we're asking for you, is from you, is just uh, in this time of great budget cuts and all the things that are going on in, in, in public ed, that anything that the city can do to help make up uh, or anything that the schools are not going to be able to do or the state's not going to be able to do in the near future uh, would, be, would be great. I, I've been coaching now 30 years, and I certainly believe that, that the school, their main function is academics. But I've also for 30 years seen the other side of it too, the extracurricular things that, that, that kids do and how it benefits people uh, by being involved in these other activities, the discipline, the hard work, learning how to win, learning how to lose, um, sportsmanship, the list goes on and on of all those things uh, that you get from extracurricular activities. But anything that you guys can do uh, in the future, and of course we're talking about the, the, the swimming pool, the new swimming pool that's opened up, uh, that can help us get lane time or access to the water, uh, any of those sorts of things would be a great benefit to us. And we would look forward to visiting with you guys in the future about possibly scheduling some time and, Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Josh Davis. I grew up in San Antonio, Texas, and 60 neighborhoods in San Antonio have a nice six lane, 25 yard pool, a traditional training pool that serves as their neighborhood swim team and their neighborhood swimming pool. And I was very fortunate when I was 10 years old to move into one of those neighborhoods that had lane space, and I fell in love with swimming. And a few years later, I came across a great coach that helped me make the high school team. And that I eventually became one of the top swimmers in the country. That gave me a full scholarship. Uh, OU did not have a swim team, so I had to go to UT instead. <laughs> Sorry about that. And thankfully at UT, we also had the Olympic head coach at UT. And I trained for four years there. And then finally in 1996, when I was 23 years old, I went to the Atlanta Olympic Games and I won three gold medals. I brought my three gold medals to show you tonight, and you guys can check it out later. But anyway, <laughs> when I was on the podium singing that anthem, wearing that gold medal in front of our country in the 96 Olympics, I thought back how grateful I was for my coaches, my parents, my family, but then I thought back to how great it was to have a pool. And the city leaders, and the people, and the visionaries who made the pool. Because without the pool, I couldn't have done any of those things. And I'm real excited that more is going to have a pool in the summer. But we need to have access to swimming lanes during the school year. And a lot of towns put a bubble over it uh, during the school year so they can use those lane lines during the school year. And the swimmers, high school swimmers can use it in the morning. And the different age level folks can use it during the work hours. And then, of course, you can have the little ones and the kids use it in the afternoons, and then the high school kids use it again, because we train twice a day, an hour and a half in the morning, an hour and a half at night, ideally. And what that does is the swimmers traditionally have top GPAs. A lot of them go swim in college. And just maybe someone from here goes on to have their Olympic dreams made possible, because they have a pool. So I just want to thank you for your time and for the consideration to possibly get a bubble over this pool and create more training opportunities for our young people to develop not only as students, but student athletes. And I think that'll open doors for a lot of our young people that, that we'll uh, enjoy for many decades to come. So thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you all. I know I'm running a little bit long, but we'll be very quick. Uh, the uh, proposal that I presented to uh, Mr. Jensen here, we, we talked about several weeks ago, was options to cover the, the uh, new pool in order to provide that year-round swimming. And I understand from discussions with him uh, earlier today and back there, there's some difficulties in doing that. But uh, even so, I appreciate the willingness of the, uh, uh, the council, mayor, and all to make accommodations to help the team be able to practice. And like I said, having a dedicated place to practice, routine places, not all the kids can be part of private clubs and get that five day a week training. In fact, m many of the uh, best athletes and half the ones that went to state are not members of clubs. And they're, they're just part of the high school swim program. And we almost have a whole generation here that's going to be missing out on swimming. And so just the ability to do uh, maybe less structural uh, improvements of negative air you know, pressure canopies that don't have as many foundation requirements or uh, maybe in the future making modifications or improvements to the pool to allow it to be all weather, we would greatly appreciate that. Again, swimming is vitally important to the community. As you see from the outpouring, vitally important to these kids. And good high school programs attract people to Town. 
the year-round facility actually helps improve the maintenance of the facility. Pools, when they cave in, when they're not used and water's in them, keeping them active year-round helps the paint, helps the maintenance, the pumps, and the structure itself last longer, better service to that. Also allows the city to provide greater services to the community as a whole. So we're looking at this as really a ways to help the city promote overall health and well-being of all age groups year-round and be able to also make good use of your facilities. So I appreciate you uh, listening to us and I look forward to continuing discussions with the uh, city staff and I greatly appreciate their professionalism and uh, also the, the true hard look that you guys have taken to this petition. I'm very honored that you entertain it. So thank you. Thank you very much. I have a couple of questions. Yes, sir. Briefly, have you, what conversations have you had with the school? What, is, what are their plans now with the community college having closed and the school deciding to close its swimming pool versus making renovations? Do they have any plans? I, I would like to turn that over to Coach, Coach okay. Long here. As, as far as I know, there are no plans for the school. Um, you know, they had the opportunity at Moore High School had some great issues here a couple years ago. They had a pool there. I don't know if you're aware of that or not, but, yeah, they, sure. no, but they did. But that's no longer a pool because they, they would rather farm it out and let us go somewhere else and swim rather than have to worry about the maintenance and the cost and all that. And of course, a couple years later, OCCC dropped the ball. And so we kind of, kind of lost out there. But as far as I know, there are no plans for the school to build a pool. At any so are they just not interested in continuing swimming as a, a uh, option for? Yeah, I, I don't think so. They've been very supportive of us swimming. I just don't think they're too excited about building a pool now. Would they come to the city and partner on something? I think that's a, a possibility. But I don't think they are going to want to build a pool on a site by themselves at, at one of the three high schools. I don't think that's I, know, I would. I do know when they were considering closing that pool, I was at that school board meeting, and there wasn't anybody there to speak in opposition of the, the closing. Discussion I remember, and it's been a few years ago, was that to make the repairs to the swimming pool is going to be about a million dollars, right. and to convert it to the gymnasium is going to be about a million dollars. <clears throat> and so I sent an email to all of the uh, school board members at the time and never heard back from any of them. So I think they had just decided that they would rather close the pool than deal with all the maintenance and the cost. And well, that sounds like that may have been what happened at the community college, they're just so expensive. And the thing about that too is at the time, uh, Moore High School, of course, used the pool at Moore High School. Southmore and, and uh, Westmore, we traveled to OCCC like we'd always done. Uh, close and convenient and simple. And so that was just going to be the plan. The plan was just going to ship Moore High School over to OCCC remotely. <coughs> and after three or four years, of course, OCCC shut down and that left everybody behind. Any other questions? They do. Uh, they have uh, facilities that are available to Norman and Norman North High School and to Sooner Swim Club. Uh, but for us to go down in any way and use those facilities, we have to be using those facilities at 8 or 9 o'clock at night during the week or during off times. Time that we just we couldn't use it. We couldn't do it. Is that the same for Rose State College? I Is think Rose State, uh, possibly full. so, but also the distance. Yeah. Because Oklahoma Christian has a pool that's not being used now since Edmond has built their facility up at Beach Park. That's where Edmond used to practice. Mm -hmm. uh, but they said we're not going to transport our kids that far each day. Now cost would be a part of that too, of course, but plus a point. Would the school provide transportation? School would. Or if we were to you know, really use that pool up there? Yes. They would? They yes. provide buses? They provide bus and, and, and the driver, yes. And would all three? Teams, our schools meet at different times. Yeah. We would, we would most likely practice at the same time. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Just to say that we've uh, had the conversations the gentleman mentioned, and we will be more than glad to uh, look at scheduling and and uh, make the pool available during the hours of the summertime, that's obviously when the pool is going to be open because of, it's an outdoor pool. Uh, so we will certainly do that. Well, what about the uh, possible idea of the dome or the or something? 
Well, we looked at it preliminarily, not in great detail, um, but um, the, pro the, the pool and the project really wasn't designed for something like that. And we don't know a cost at this point, um, but there's not any funding that's identified for it either, in terms of either upfront cost and or operational costs over time. Okay. Well, just, I don't know, I, I would just, We'd certainly be glad to visit with the school district, but no one's contacted us from the school district to, okay. to visit. It would be hard for us to do a bond issue to put a dome over it, oh, yeah. since the school just ate up all the millage for the funding for the whole county. $209 million bond issue that they just didn't, they didn't include it. Which <clears throat> pretty well, much just signifies to me they don't want it. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree. Well, I, I'm a fan of swimming. My son swam in high school. He was a team captain over at West Lawn once upon a time. Um, certainly anything we as a city can do to help, I'm, I'm more than willing to do that. Uh, it, I don't know how much we can do. Certainly that discussion needs to continue. It does. I agree. Okay. Thank all y'all for coming. Absolutely. Yeah, we do appreciate, appreciate that. Okay. Item B is items from the city council or trustees. I have one note here. Um, this is from uh, HUD. We just got our notification that our regular annual 2016 allocations have been approved for $305,700 for the 2016 allocation. So that's nice. CDBG. CDBG. I didn't think we were going to get anything this year. So that's very nice. Of okay. Any items from the city manager or trust manager? Just want to have uh, Galen come up. He wanted to. Uh, make a couple of comments since we're going to be entering into uh, second storm spring. season <laughs> soon. <laughs> and uh, he wanted to make a couple of remarks about uh, the sirens in Oklahoma City's new siren <laughs> policy that's in place now. Um, well, the computer was ready to go, but uh, we'll just a second here. Um, Mayor Council, good evening. Uh, the We've been getting some questions, and, and if we've been getting them, I'm sure you have too. Uh, there's been some press about Oklahoma City, and they have changed their cyber policy for this year. And so I wanted just to give you a quick update on, on what they're doing, how that relates to what we do, and, um, and answer any questions you might have about that. Uh, okay. okay, so here is our current policy. Uh, this is the same uh, tornado siren activation policy that we have had in place as long as I've been either the emergency management or civil defense director, and probably long before I was around. Uh, basically, it says if tornado conditions are threatening us, we blow our sirens. Uh, and we have 38 sirens currently, uh, but they are scattered throughout town. They're 
We have a very good siren system, it's very robust, a lot of uh, redundancy in it. Um, I am very confident, uh, and, and unfortunately we've had to use it some, but uh, if we push the button, you can hear it. Um, the problem comes is that on the city around us on three sides with their 182 sirens, um, as you can see here, um, you know, we're, So anyway, you, you can see uh, they're surrounding us. And their policy for many years has been that whenever the National Weather Service issues a tornado warning for any one of the three counties that they have sirens in, then they activate all the sirens within that particular county. So if there's a tornado warning issue for Cleveland County, they blow all their sirens for South Bay and Ninth Street. Uh, it's Oklahoma County, they blow all of the, the hundreds of more sirens in Oklahoma County and just west. Uh, they, they blow the ones from Aiden County. That has caused some problems. Uh, this is a storm. Uh, this is the Bridge Creek storm uh, back in March of last year, or I'm sorry, May of last year, May 6th. Uh, if you can, it's a bit difficult to see, but the, the red box up in the far northwest corner of our county and in, in northern McLean County, it used to be a bit of the greatest county, is the actual area of the tornado warning was issued by the National Weather Service. The storm was, it was kind of where you see the white area uh, moving to the, the uh, northeast, uh, and they blew all of their sirens that were south of 89th Street, and that was exactly what they should have done. That, that was a great warning. This one was a couple of weeks later, on uh, May 19th. Uh, this is a storm. You can see the cell is down to the southwest of Purcell, and uh, moving to the northeast. Uh, this was about three in the afternoon. It was a tornado warning that included part of Cleveland County, so they blew all of their sirens south of 89th Street, even though there's no part of Oklahoma City there that's threatened. Uh, this caused a lot of problems for us because, of course, we weren't blowing our sirens. Uh, in fact, the skies up here were, were fairly, fairly blue. Um, one of the issues was that our schools, when the sirens were off, they locked school down. This is right at school dismissal time. Uh, I know that there were lots of parents that were very uh, upset because, you know, they, they, A, weren't being allowed to take their children, and B, you know, come in, come in, you know, there's a tornado, and they're looking at going, uh, in fact, one of our employees, I don't know, had an issue with that. Um, probably the, uh, the worst case scenario was a week or so after that on May 20, I believe it's 29. Uh, this is a storm that was at 6.15 in the morning. It had already gone past us. I uh, didn't do anything here, wasn't forecast to do anything here. But as it got over in the far eastern part of the county, over southeast of Lake Thunderbird, uh, moving southeast very rapidly. Uh, the Weather Service has indicated a small spin up on the radar. They issue a warning. It's a warning for the county. But we say we're the south of South Bay Main Street, even though it was off. In fact, the Weather Service canceled part of the warning for Cleveland County one minute after they issued it. So, Lots of problems here. This has been an ongoing problem for many years. Uh, finally, this year, uh, it, it percolated up to the top. Um, the, the emergency managers have tried for many years to, to visit with Oklahoma City about this uh, unsuccessfully. Uh, this year, uh, I think the combination of these events and some other uh, internal reviews and the work of Mr. Eady and some of the other city managers in the area caused a Oklahoma City to wish to have some discussion. Uh, we did that, um, and if they were successful, we were successful. Uh, they have a new policy. That policy now is that they have done two things. Three things. Number one, they've changed their policies where they activate their sirens that are within the particular area of a warning. Now they it's not perfect because they, they've had to sectorize their sirens to do that. I'll show you that here in just a minute. Um, and they're, they're, if, if the warning polygon touches any of those uh, 
sector is going to look for that sector. It's a, a, a great reduction in the amount of sirens that one is examining. Um, that's a little hard to see, but she can, you can see they have nine different sectors for their 182 sirens. Uh, there's two in Cleveland County. Uh, basically, it's east of Sooner Road or west of Sooner Road. So the, uh, the southwest Connect or southwest Cleveland section there encompasses all the way around us. And, and you can see they have uh, uh, the other sectors as well. So what will that do for us? Um, this is a storm, you might remember the tornado that's, that actually set down just to the southwest of our city limits uh, on May 10th of 2010. Kind of tracked that over Mayor South the view of your house and, and actually a little spin up just north of your house. Um, went on to destroy the loves that I believe the Choctaw. There's a couple of fatalities in Oklahoma City off that direction. What Oklahoma City did that day was blow all of the sirens in Oklahoma County, all of the sirens in Cleveland County. That's a lot of sirens in a great big area. And you can see with the new uh, sectorizing and, and threat-based warnings, they will only deactivating three sectors, a 90% reduction in the amount of sirens we want, or the population that they're over um, Here's one uh, from last year. <coughs> this was a storm that actually moved double arouse. We blew our sirens several times. I think the city blew their sirens several times. Uh, but then the, the storm moved east of Draper Lake, before, they again would have been going all of Oklahoma County, all of Cleveland County. Now they'll be going just basically east of Sydney Road. So it, it, it's a great reduction in the amount of sirens that are, that are going and therefore the, the number of people that are needlessly trying to alert. Um, a couple more things. Um, one of the things that they had some problems internally with that they, they now solved is that the, the sirens belong to one of their city divisions. Uh, they're activated by another one, and the policy is written by a third, which is, and, and it's still that way. However, the division that blew them, which is their 911 uh, communications, uh, they blew based on the text from the weather service. It did not matter if one of the police officers or firefighters saw a tornado and said, you need to blow. They couldn't do that. The emergency management folks were not involved at all. They tried um, on one of the storms last year to, one of the cell storms. Uh, they tried to call over because they knew that there was no threat to Oklahoma City. And they just said, well, I'm sorry, but you know, we have a policy, we have to follow our policy. They have now changed this to where uh, it's not just the weather service warning. But it's also if they're field personnel or if they have a, a good reason to believe, um, you know, if they see helicopter video on TV and, and you know, there's obviously something going on, if they have the ability, uh, you know, and say emergency managers can now uh, have input into this decision. One of the things you'll see from that, um, if this warning here were just a little bit farther east of where it just maybe just barely touched sector three, they have the ability to say, well, let's not. Let's not activate that sign. That sign. Uh, again, the benefits of that, they're going to way reduce the amount of people who are needlessly alerting. Uh, fewer false warnings and so on, better, better coordination. And it's a tremendous thing for us because now we, we will have less problems with their blowing their sirens. We're not blowing our sirens, but yet. Our dispatchers, our emergency managers, our city staff are taking very heated phone calls from people going, are you a bunch of idiots? What's going on? So uh, we, we are very excited about this. Um, and we, we repeatedly told Oklahoma City that and, and we applaud their efforts for that. I wanted you to know this because there have been some questions that I've been receiving. Uh, okay, Oklahoma City's changed theirs. When are we going to change ours? Ours has always been that way. Ours has been that way for a long, long time. And as has most of the rest of the Metro, the Oklahoma City Chief Manager, or emergency manager, told me last week that uh, his words were, 
that they're the ones that are going to us. So they, they have uh, gone on with what the rest of the country is doing. So, and somebody asked you to tell me we're already here. One final thing, uh, the thing that has not changed is what the sirens mean. And what the sirens mean is you hear a siren and it's not noon on Saturday and the weather's there. That means you need to be taking shelter. You need to be doing something. Once you take shelter, then go seek more information. It's not, not the other way around. It's not, oh, the sirens are going off. Let's go look out the window. You know, let's, let, let's take care of ourselves first and then we'll figure out what's going on. So, if I can answer any questions, I'd be more than happy to. So when we hear an Oklahoma City siren anymore, we ought to also be hearing a four siren. Pretty close. Um, if you're hearing one, now if you live far east, you may hear uh, their, David, do we have the, the uh, map back to um, yeah, if, if there's If there's this one that they're going to their sector four on here, which is east of Sooner Road, some of our eastern residents may be hearing that. Yeah. Um, and, but yes, the, uh, the way they do their, their sectors, um, if they're going sector three, then if it's a threat to them, it's very likely a threat to us. Now, there might be one that's going to just barely rush the western part of their sector through the EDL, maybe. <laughs> but for the most part, if they're going to be a threat, they're going to. Ken, why don't you address the all clear siren? There is no all clear siren. Exactly. <laughs> a, uh, a misconception, and we nobody seems to know where it started um, because. Uh, no community, at least in this part of the, the region, has ever admitted that they ever had a policy that they'd gone off there. So again, uh, if you hear the sirens, you need to take care of it. They only run for three minutes. So just because they ran and now they've stopped doesn't mean, oh, okay, I can come back out. Um, the warnings are normally half hour to 45 minutes long. And, <coughs> You know, we have a, a uh, unofficial policy between Mr. E and I that we, they run for free, they automatically shut off, and we sit there and kind of do this for a minute and then we're pushing again. So we, we try and continue to blow up. And the city does not. Um, if the weather service issues a new warning, which they do apply that now, uh, and I think you're going to see it, the weather service move more and more in that direction for shorter duration, smaller, and then more frequent. But, um, but no, yes, there is no all clear, and you know, once you're in your shelter, you should have another means of information. Hopefully you've got two or three. Uh, by the way, this only counts for one. I don't care how many apps and, and you know, channel four or five or nine, you know, just because you have three apps doesn't mean you have three sources. It's one source. This, if the battery on this dies, then, then you've lost it. Uh, weather radio is a good uh, option. We do program those for free. If you've got a weather radio, give us a call. Debbie and I will we'll hook you up with some programming on it. So thank you for asking. You know, uh, people who have uh, satellite TV, uh, that's not always a reliable source during that time because a lot of times that can black. The uh, rain will sometimes mess with the uh, with the signals, uh, the particular wavelength. And some of the satellites are different depending on what wavelength. But, uh, yes, satellite TV. Uh, most people know, you know, already know. Okay, when it starts raining, I lose, or when it starts raining, I don't lose. So. And for twenty-five dollars, you can get an antenna and switch over to live TV. So. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it opens your TV. Yep. Yeah. First thing it goes out is a cell phone. Yes. <laughs> That's the first thing it goes out. And sometimes when the sirens are going and they go off all of a sudden, it means the tornado knocked them out. <laughs> so we saw that last time too. Yes, we did. Okay. Any other questions? Just a comment. This is good news. I actually read this a month or so back in the paper. But we had a couple storms last year where friends and neighbors could why in the world did more blow their sirens? The storm wasn't even close. It wasn't our sirens, it was the cities. And they were correct, they weren't even close. So I know you guys have been fighting this for some time with Oklahoma City. Thank you, Oklahoma City, finally. Uh, good news. Thank you. Thanks, Brad.
very much. Thank you, David. Item nine is adjournment. So moved. Second. All right. Thank you both. Would you call for the vote, please? Jason Blair. Yes. Melissa Hunt. Yes. Terry Kafter. Yes. David Roberts. Yes. Mark Ham. Yes. Lynn Lewis. Yes. Item carries. We are adjourned. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you.